Lambs Radio people, welcome once more to Lamco Labs, deep in the bowels of Lamb Communications. I've been asked by the boys at Lamb to design a range of antennas that they can manufacture under the Vine Antennas brand. It's a very exciting commission indeed. We're looking to produce a fairly comprehensive range of wire antennas, including a very good quality general HF antenna for multiband use. Now if you've done any experimenting with antennas yourself, you'll understand that that's quite a challenge. In my many years of experimenting with antennas, the multiband off center fed dipole has always worked very well for me in the past. So I set about designing an 80 to 10 meter variant and also a 40 to 10 meter version. Now the key to a good off center fed antenna is going to be the ballon. Now, the ballon is critical to the performance of the antenna and hence I've spent an awful lot of time experimenting with different ballon designs to find what I think is the best solution. There's different types of material, there's different designs of ballon. I've got a number of commercial ballons here that I've been trying and it's fairly clear to me that some of them don't quite perform as well as they might. There are two things that we need a ballon to do. It must convert a balanced signal, which is one where the two signals are identical but 180 degrees out of phase. So it must convert that signal into an unbalanced signal. And any more or any less than 180 degrees out of phase will convert to losses. So it needs to go from balanced to unbalanced and also in the other direction, unbalanced to balanced. It also must be low loss in that the amplitude of the input signal must be pretty similar to the amplitude of the output signal. We don't want losses inside the ballon because that will become heat generation. Now I've tested a few of these commercial ballons that I've got and I'm pretty horrified at their performance. So I've set about testing numerous different ballon designs myself until I've found what I think is the best for our range of antennas. So what I'd like to do is quickly show you some of my test results and then show you one of the prototype multiband off-center fed antennas in use. Come along with me. So the first thing I wanted to show you was the ballon output. Now, this yellow trace here is my input signal, and then this sort of blue, green, and purple are my two output signals. You'll see that they are exactly 180 degrees out of phase, so that's exactly what we want the ballon to do. That's critical. Now, this is true right across the range of HF in my ballon design, which is this one here. It uses a type 31 ferrite and very tightly wound bifiller windings made with Teflon coated cable to make it heat proof. Now, this is what my ballon looks like and what I want to do now is quickly show you what a commercial ballon that I tested looks like. So this is exactly the same test setup. This is at 30 megahertz and you'll see that these two signals are nowhere near 180 degrees out of phase and any difference between 180 degrees and not will result in losses because these two signals will cancel each other out once they're a balanced uh, once they're in a balanced line so this is absolutely hopeless now my ballon works very very well right across the HF range so I'm very very pleased with that the other thing to show you is the test setup so thinking about losses what I've done is I've taken my spectrum analyzer tracking generator fed the tracking generator output into the 50 ohm part of the ballon and then taken the 200 ohm four balanced output and fed it to another one and converted it back to 50 ohms so I've got two balance back to back that's actually what this test setup is here it's lashed together on the bench for the purposes of testing it but we've got two balance back to back to go 50 to 200 to 200 to 50 ohms but what I can now do now is look through my tracking generator and we can see what sort of losses we're incurring in the ballon so the yellow line is simply the straight through so that's without the balance in the test setup that's just the coax feeders that I'm using to come in and out of it so that's where my tracking generator is and it's set to be at minus 20 dBm so that's exactly right when I then put my two balance into my uh, test setup the purple trace is the one that I get so you'll see we're very very low loss all the way up to about 30 megahertz and then it does start to tail off slightly but this is up at 56 megahertz so I would say that this is more than usable right up to six meters and then after that it begins to tail off which is very much what we'd expect because of the type of ferrite that we're using but given that these are 
two balance and not one, so we've got double the losses incurred here. This is only to minus 21.92 dBm all the way up at 56 megahertz. So my losses are actually less than one dB here in one balance. So that's superb. I'm really, really pleased with this. So let me quickly show you the antenna in use and I think you'll agree it's working beautifully. So we're now looking at my ICOM IC7610. Uh, the antenna 2 socket on the back has got the 40 meter variant of the off center fed dipole connected to it. It's not very high in my garden, it should be higher, it's only at about 25 feet, which isn't really high enough for optimum performance on 40 meters, it should be a quarter wave off the ground. But you'll see that the um, band, there's a CW test going on at the moment. But you'll see that the band is full of signals. There's lots and lots and lots of signals appearing on the band. If I tune to a, a quiet part of the bit of space, um, let me find an empty gap. Let me put the radio in RTTY mode. I switch off the tuner and I transmit now. So you'll see that the SWR is just over 1.5 to 1, and that's because it's not high enough. But of course the antenna tuner will bring that down to 1 to 1. So I'd expect this to work very well on 40. I'd expect it to work very well on 20. So let's just have a look at the uh, uh, SWR here. So this is the uh, off-center fed dipole. No tuner. Let me quickly hit transmit. Right, the SWR is 1 to 1. So no need for an ATU there. Let's go up now to 15 meters where I'd also expect it to work nicely. Um... Let me put this back into RT2Y mode. So let's have a quick look at 15 meters again, SWR 1 to 1, and 28 megahertz or 10 meters, antenna 2. Put it in RT2Y mode. Again, the SWR is 1 to 1. Now, on um, 10 megahertz, um, I would expect it to work, but need a bit of a tuner. Now, the internal tuner will cope with it beautifully on 10 megahertz. And again, the um, signal quality is excellent. There's plenty of signals on the band. Eighteen megahertz or seventeen meters. Again, I would expect a bit of SWR. Let me put it on the right antenna. Excuse me. Yes, yeah, so we've got a bit of SWR, but again, the tuner will bring that down. Um, and similarly, on twenty-four megahertz or twelve meters, it will work just as well here. So, a very good multiband antenna that works throughout um, all of the HF bands.